my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we live in a day and age in a society where individuality is celebrated, encouraged, and promoted. And uh, therefore, as we all know, there are various movements that have sprung up in society where it celebrates each person, as we say, we are made or born this way. But having said that, especially for us as Christians, we are made to be aware that we are not on a journey on our own, but we are on a journey with our Creator. Therefore, for modern society, I think the biggest stumbling block in accepting this is the pride and uh, the self-consciousness that they have, which makes them unaware of the bigger picture or the grand plan of God. We can see that very clearly in today's gospel, as we heard very clearly, as it said, leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples made their way. Now, what does this mean? This means at the beginning of this chapter in, in the Gospel of St. Mark, the disciples had a first-hand encounter of a theophany, that is, the transfiguration of Jesus. They see Jesus transfigured and the voice of the Father saying, this is my beloved. And yet, as they come down the mountain, what are they interested in? In making their own CVs. Who is the greatest? Who is most capable to run this new venture? It is kind of sad. But that is such, that is our human nature. We are constantly filled with pride and even at times arrogance, even spiritually, to say, I am better than the other. But what Jesus tells us today in the gospel is, as he brings this little child into his midst and says, you need to be more like this. Remember, don't misinterpret. It is not, Jesus is not encouraging childish behavior, but to be more childlike. My dear brothers and sisters, most of us, as we heard in today's first reading, being human, even though we are Christian, find ourselves gripped with jealousy and ambition. And uh, even when we pray, we have an image of God that we ourselves have made, and also we have an image of what we want with God. And therefore, this morning I just want to, it's a very simple homily, not great theology, but I just want to reflect with you as to how we see God and how do we see ourselves. My dear brothers and sisters, most of the time when we encounter God or when we go to God, we come with a grocery list of things or we make a barter system. I will not do this if you do this for me. And in today's second reading, St. James very clearly says, the reason God does not listen to our prayers at times is because we don't really express our true calling. It is there that God gives us what we need. Just imagine this for a moment. As we heard in today's entrance hymn, processional hymn, it says, God, the creator of all, God, who we cannot even imagine or comprehend, something that is vast, something that's much more, something 
that we can't even comprehend. The creator of the universe, the creator of the galaxies. And what he says, as, as we heard in the hymn, he looks down on us. He is interested in us. He has his eye on you because we are the climax of his creation. And therefore, his need to journey with us is intense, is immense. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, in order for us to have this encounter with the Lord, we need to see as to what do we really need to have this encounter. Most of us, especially young people, and even I have been in this world as one time, because as you know, I'm a late vocation, and therefore quite used to getting my accolades, getting my CVs done. But what is the CV of spirituality? What is it that you can show to God as you enter the gates of heaven? My dear brothers and sisters, most of us, the reason, as St. James says in his letter, the reason that we find envy, jealousy, and ambition in our lives is because we constantly keep comparing ourselves to each other. And not only that, we also compare ourselves at times to, to God himself. And that was the fall of man. As Satan himself says, if you eat, you will be like him. There itself sprang human ambition, human pride. And therefore, we have been handed down this sin through the ages that we can't let go. But what Jesus does today in the gospel is, tells us to remember that God wants to journey with us, that he wants to divinize us, he wants to recapture that original holiness that we ourselves lost through our pride. There is a beautiful story that a friend of mine shared some time ago. He says as he was visiting families, as a, he was a, he's a priest, as he was visiting families, he one evening he, he visited a family where the father was out on business for a couple of days. And as this father comes back home, and my friend the priest was there, his two sons opened the door and rushed up to him to hug him, says, Dada, you're back. It was a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And as these two boys, these two sons of his, rushed up and uh, hugged the father. It says the father picked up the two-year-old and swung him and kept him on his shoulders. And then the four-year-old, seeing that, started tugging on the pants of his father and said, Dada, what about me? What about me? And then it says, his father picks up the other child as well. My dear brothers and sisters, most of us in our spiritual journeys, do we have that childlike simplicity to tug onto God and says, what about me? Because that is what it's all about. It's not about how well we do things, but it is about how well we are open, or how much are we open to the great mystery of God? Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, as we hear the word of God proclaimed, let us look into ourselves. Does it overwhelm us? Does it transform us? Does it challenge us to look at the world and ourselves in a different light? Are we able to, when it comes to God, 
leave aside our pride and be like a child to depend on divine providence? Are we able to put aside our own agendas, to lay, to lay all our cares, our worries, our anxieties to the divine, the encounter which each of us experience, especially during this Eucharist? So therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, let us during this Mass ask the Lord to divinize us, to speak to our hearts, to transform us, so that we, like this little child in today's Gospel, may really know the beauty, the love, the kindness, the generosity of God in our lives. Let us cling to that and no other. Let us hope in that vision that Jesus himself gives us. So therefore, whenever we pray, let us be more conscious now from this day onwards. Are we asking things for our own self, for our pride? Or is it for our spiritual development and growth? That is a challenge that we have today in today's readings. Let us therefore make this our prayer as we continue in today's Eucharist. <laughs> 